This popper, it's called the popper. It looks like an air popcorn pop, but it's got some extra knobs and buttons. Right. Where I don't think it's going to be quite as, as exact as your other one, but it looks like it gives you a little more control. So, Aaron, I told you that I was going to order some coffee. I asked you what kind of coffee you wanted me to order. You gave me that order. I ordered the coffee. The big box came. And in the big box, I knew I was ordering, you didn't, was I, I grabbed the popper from Sweet Right. Bird. Yeah, I didn't even know you were going to do that. I yeah. just come over and I said, I see this new thing. I was like, what right. did you do? So yeah. we chat about that in the past. The hot air popcorn popper that we chatted about last episode and uh, the approach to getting the different levels and all that stuff, that hot air popcorn popper from Sweet Maria's at the time of recording is 24 bucks. And that comes with four pounds of coffee. So it's almost really free with, right. with the coffee. We talked about the, the popper. We believe that it comes from Sweet Maria's because uh, it's obviously all of their documentation. It's funny. Three different things of documentation came with it. We have that on the desk from us and uh, 89 bucks. And uh, it's basically a hot air popcorn popper plus. Right. So I was trying to figure out because we talked about last episode or actually it might've been two episodes ago where I use this air popcorn popper. It's very inexact. It's kind of an art. It's kind of a gut. Um, feel for how you do the coffee. And then we have your coffee roaster, which you had previously bought for like a hundred bucks. Right. And that can do like a pound at a time. And it's got all these gadgets and buttons and heat controls and all these things, more of the science aspect. This popper, it's called the popper. It looks like an air popcorn pop, but it's got some extra knobs and buttons. Right. Where I don't think it's going to be quite as exact as your other one, but it looks like it gives you a little more control. In a future episode, we're going to chat about what we've done with this. I'm going to do some fun stuff with it. I might send it home with you and let you do some stuff sure. with it. But today we want to do first impressions. Right. Because, you know, we literally just played with it today. We, we made two 100 gram batches of coffee. Right. So first impressions, what did you think? Well, one thing, I, I, I was taking a look at this in a lot of ways, about the same time frame. Well, well maybe a little bit longer than what like a batch for air popcorn popper would yeah it's about the same amount of time as an air popper I, I would say that usually it takes me about five to six minutes to do a half cup of green beans in my popcorn popper this one was about three quarters of a cup and the, the initial setting they say try it at 10 minutes so it took about 10 minutes right, right? but in that 10 minutes includes the cooling right so how much time do you spend cooling right Is it, yeah you know what you might have a good point there's probably I would say maybe about between eight to 10 minutes, eight minutes for me, 10 minutes for this. Okay. All right. Let's say, okay. okay. I, mean, I didn't, I didn't take notes. So anyway, so this popper, this device here that you just bought. And we'll link to in the show notes, episode four. So again, looks like a air popcorn popper. It looks almost the same. It's got this dome on it, just like the top and everything. You put three quarters of a cup of green beans in it. It said hundred grams. So, so we, we weighed it out to hundred grams on both tests. Yeah. And it's got three little cool knobs here. One is for time. It's got a timer, which I really dig because I'm doing it. I use my iPhone to, to keep the timer. And there's other ways I could do it, but I, that's what I have in my pocket. And the screen goes to sleep. So I got to look at it again. It recognizes my face. And, and that's really annoying. Here it's got a timer, right? So it's got one knob here, which is a fan speed. High, low. It off. Pretty simple for a right. guy like me. They say the majority of the time you're going to be on high and, and low is for some finishing stuff that you might do at the end. Right. Then there's a third knob that is the temperature control. It doesn't even have like numbers on it. They recommend putting it in the two o'clock position, right. which we did. That works. Ish. Right. Yeah. Right? That works. So when I dig about this, it's given me a little more control, but it's still dumbing it down for me where it's got, do I want it on high right. or low? Do I want it lots of heat? Or a little bit at least, right? It's not like super precise. It's got a timer there for me. So now let's speak to the timer. The timer doesn't go past 10 minutes. So if right. you're going to go longer than 10 minutes, you'll have to let it down to eight and then add two more minutes. Right. And it's a knob timer. It's not a click thing. So it's, it's not precise. But what we found is that 10 minutes was plenty because the beans that we did at 10 minutes was a bit more than we, than we, than we tend to like. Yeah. You might like it. Yeah. Okay. You might want to darken, but we like it a little bit lighter. So we don't need to do it for 10 minutes. Maybe we'll do it at night. And also the last three minutes of that 10 minute cycle is a cooling off period. So after, let's say if we do 10 minutes, the final three minutes of your cycle, it switches to not so hot of heat. Well, no heat at all. It's just air. It's just air. 
So it'll start a little bit hot because the thing is hot. You know, it basically just blows air, not hot. So a 10 minute cycle is seven minutes of heat air, mm -hmm. three minutes of no heat air. So, so it's got this device where it times things out for you, gives you a cooling phase. So that for that three minute is blowing with room temperature air, it's done. We take off the cover and next thing you know, we pour it and it's already at room temperature phase or pretty cool. So I don't have to flip it in the colander like I usually do. And I've heard that the cool down process is really important because the cool down process, we chat about this a little bit the next episode. I mean, A, if it's still hot, it's going to keep cooking. So you might've stopped it at the level that you wanted, but then it keeps cooking. It goes past the level that you wanted. So that's where you get uneven. That's where you get towards uh, all issues. So to have this thing clean it off. I mean, I spend such a huge chunk when I make a light device out on the balcony and get with the uh, colander, you know, throwing the popcorn up in the air, blowing off the chow, all this done. This for me was, was a game changer that would make me consider going this route mm. because you know me simple, keep it simple, right. air popcorn popper. Right. But this one, I liked a lot to do the chaff because there's, there's the skin on those green beans and they're blowing out of your popcorn popper. And I had to come up with this system with this big bowl with a moist paper towel right. and the funnel of the dome of the air popcorn popper kind of directs it into the bowl, right. the moist towel, the chaff clings to it. So it doesn't get everywhere. Sometimes. Right. Right. This is why I had, the big reason why I had to do it outside right. was because chaff was getting everywhere right. and my wife was having none of it. So she kicked me out, right? So I do it in my garage sometimes or sometimes out on my deck, which means the temperature is all different. Like I've come up with different ways. I put it in a little box to keep the temperature a little more insulated, but that controls the chaff. Here on the popper, it's got a little basket. We call it the chaff basket. And this chaff basket, it, it, it it's a closed system. So the cover is closed and all the chaff blows out from the beans into this basket and it catches it. Yeah. So at the end, you just kind of take it out and now I will tell you, put it in the trash can. Between the fancy machine I have now, mm -hmm. I bought an air popper off from Sweet Maria's and it, it turned out bad. Sweet Maria's actually honored the warranty, gave me my money back. And so they did a great job, but that also had a chaff basket that many times beans would go into. And one of the things we checked on both of these roasts, I went through all the chaff. There's not a single bean in there. So this chaff basket works significantly better than the more expensive hot air style advanced popcorn that ended up dying on me. So who knows how good it was? Yeah. Okay. So you're looking at me strange. So my history, my history was yeah. hotter popcorn popper. Uh -huh. Then I bought a more higher end hotter popcorn popper that was like in the $130 range or what. Oh, okay. That did not do well for me. Okay. And that actually died a couple of months into it. And Sweet Maria's returned my money. And um, and then I bought the roaster off of Amazon. We'll be chatting. Got it. it. Okay. And that company, th that I can't even remember the name of it. They don't sell it anymore. It's it just known to have problems. And anyway, what I'm saying is a more expensive device that also had a chaff catcher. Many times I'd have to pull the beans out of the chaff. Oh. Okay. So it didn't have the cooler, had an ineffective chaff. You know, this does better. Okay. By the way, chaff basket, fries, a little bit of tartar sauce. Yummy meat. Good to go. Keep going. Good to go. So the chaff, now it doesn't hold all of the chaff because, right. you know, there are vents and holes in, right. in the, in the popper. And so some of that gets out, but it's, it's oh my gosh, it's like 99% better. Yeah. yeah. So that was a definite positive. And by the time you're done, you, you have the beans ready to go. Okay. So here's a question I, I have for you. hundred bucks, you had a coffee roaster that could do a pound at a time and all that. And then this popper here is 89, so 11 bucks less. Ish. And mine, I can't remember, it was 105, 107, like that. Okay, so, let's see. So let's say yeah. 11 to 15. Right, right. First impressions, why, well, the thing why with, should we get a popper instead of like a little bit more of an expensive? What, what attracts me about the popper, number one, well, first of all, number one, I just love me the gadgets. Same. <laughs> so there we go. But number two, what's really cool is, and this is what they said in the documentation, recommend how you start pretty much any coffee, any green bean set you get, you could throw it in for the 10 minutes, set it at two o'clock, run it. And in 10 minutes, you have coffee done. Mm -hmm. You're not shaking anything. You're not moving anything. You're not outside. You're not worried about. So it is a really quick way to really quickly make coffee. Mm -hmm. And I really like that idea. And what's interesting too, is I have been wanting to try my coffees at different levels. I, I have my favorite beans, but I, I do them at a certain level. And I like that level so much that I don't want to go less or I don't want to go more. That's so what's interesting here is I can do a hundred grams at full city. I can do hundred grams full city plus. I can do hundred grams even at, at Vienna if I wanted to, and then see how I, I like these. So this is a very quick fix type of situation. Mm -hmm. Now, Joel, our, our mutual buddy, Joel, Joel's coming back to the field. Joel gets a pound of coffee. 
I would not do a pound of coffee in this because, you know, it'd be a lot of work to go through that the number of times. So quick fix, quick hit, a way to go much more artisanal, a way to go much more individual batches and that type of thing. We found in the first batch we did, and a lot of people might not have thought this through, but green beans have water in them. And so when you roast them, the water comes out, which means they're going to be less. And so what was interesting was our hundred grams of coffee in the first one actually became 90 grams uh, right. of roasted That's coffee. Yeah. yeah. You're going to go home and you're going to test to see, you still do the old pot method of things. I do. Yeah. And so you're going to find out, is that a full pot? Is that two pots? What is that? And, and, and we'll bring back that equation when we visit this in the future. But so I think from a quick hit, and the thing is like, you saw all my coffee's gone. My decaf's gone. My Guatemala's gone. I got nothing. And so I was able to do a quick hit in 10 minutes and I've got coffee for tomorrow morning. Now, not ideal because we want it to air out for a couple of days and we'll hit that in future episodes. So it's a nice, easy, quick hit. A, B, it's a nice way to try all the different levels. And it is really set it and forget it. You know, and I really like that. So I could try 10 minutes at different temperatures and see what that does. And this is nice is you don't have to monitor it the whole right. time. You can set a timer. It right. does. It goes into cooling. And boom, you're right. We're done. So that, that is pretty cool. I have found, and I'd love your thoughts on this and we'll close this out. There's a real significant element of 80-20 in home coffee roasting. Mm -hmm. Everything I've done has been so much better than what I can get anywhere else. We chatted about a recent episode of, I went to Kona, which is the big island, and I need to get my Kona because the stuff I made and the stuff I brought. And so we haven't been precise in a lot of areas, but what we make is so much better. And so one of the things we really want to convince you of in, in, in season one is it's pretty hard to screw up if you just follow some basic directions. And that's the thing I like here. Like, I don't mean this in, in a sparing way, but like if I was on the road and Heidi needed to roast some coffee, Heidi, put a hundred grams in there, you know, go for 10 minutes, bam, you got your coffee the next morning. So that's easy. I like that part. I like the variance of it. I don't see myself throwing away the old, the other machine. And we'll chat about that in a different episode. So future episodes, we'll talk about my machine. We'll talk about where we took this and I'll definitely take it for a run. Then you take it for a run too. Yeah. Let's, let's do a really yeah. in, intense look at that and go from there. But I, I like what you said there, Paul. Maybe we can end it on this. This is hard to screw up. Yeah. So you don't have to be worried about how your coffee is going to turn out. Right. 99% of the time, unless you forget about right. it. And that's the cool thing. It's this timer. Fire. That's the thing. That's the cool thing about this timer. Like it will let you forget about it. But even me with the popcorn pop, I was worried. Is it going to taste right? You're not going to screw up. Your coffee is going to be better than what you can buy pretty much no matter what you do. Right. So next week we will chat about the device that I'm using and um, Aaron will grill me on that. Like I grilled them on the hot air popper and then we'll go for other things. And then a little while later, we'll go in depth the popper for under hundred bucks. It's an extremely foolproof way to get into the game and it's interesting and I love me some gadgets. And so that's why we took a look. Aaron, I will give you the final word and then we'll close off the episode. Enjoy your morning and enjoy your coffee, guys. Thank you.